Hey guys, welcome back to the HTC tournament here. Uh, we have the Trumpster and Life Coach coming up. The second half of day one is underway. And uh, man, I got I got a quick peek of Trump. He's, he's sporting the solo mid shirt, looking swag. And um, yeah, you were talking about how uh, Trump is is doing pretty damn well recently in tournaments. Oh man, it's, uh, it's really... It's, I would not say it's surprising, but Trump was one of the most underrated players, let's say last year, where mm. he was really playing in a lot of tournaments, doing um, mostly well, but still called a streamer. I think it still uh, persists, even though right now at the, the world ranking, he is top 30, um, he is 12th best players in North America, and um, he recently qualified for the ESL Legendary Series, he did pretty well in the HTC tournament. So, you know, if Trump takes this tournament, I will not be surprised. I think he deserves it. Uh, he is playing a lot of Hearthstone. He knows the meta game, and he's getting better and better every day. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's absolutely the case. I think uh, at the very start, he was no Trump was around in like the very very first tournaments, and he kind of stumbled a little bit in those. I think kind of got a bad uh, impression on some of the very early fans. But uh, since those first few months, he's been up in his game to the very top, and he is. He is at the very top uh, these days, so very good stuff. But his opponent, Life Coach, is also no stranger to the top of the uh, Hearthstone rankings. How about that? Yeah, he's fourth in the world at the moment, and uh, Life Coach is only thinking about Hearthstone. And um, he's like, when you talk to Life Coach, he's, uh, he wants to discuss Hearthstone theories. Uh, he has some uh, Hearthstone pros visiting him to talk Hearthstone. Like Ostkaka was spending some time in, uh, at Life Coach's home. Uh, visiting him and his wife and basically Ostkaka said yeah life coach only wanted to talk about Hearthstone with me the whole time we didn't do anything else just play Hearthstone discuss strategies yeah. so he is really into the perfect play and uh, perfect Hearthstone hands yeah life coach is a actually a retired professional poker player and I think for poker players this was a lot of what they did to be successful uh, you know they read a lot of stuff they watched a lot of people play they talked strategies you know even the very, very top poker players were like taking lessons from other poker players, um, you know, during during their their great periods. Just because, um, even though yes, a lot of games are dictated by RNG, the few that aren't, if you are able to win them from your ability to play the game, you know, the sky really is the limit with uh, with the ability to play in Hearthstone, and um, you want every possible advantage if you want to be successful. And recently. In the last few months, Life Coach has really, has really brought like the absolute top level, um, top level plays that, you know, some people were surprised to see, but some others not so much. Absolutely, both players they love to crunch the numbers, but uh, looking at their their lineups, they are bringing some interesting stuff that we haven't seen today. Uh, there is Druid from Life Coach and a Shaman for Trump. That's exciting. Yeah, I actually didn't even know what that icon was when I was looking at him. Like, what was that? <laughs> is that a bug? <laughs> the I don't guy recognize the that. Do you mean the yeah, guy in the hood or the guy with the horns? Yeah, the guy in the hood. Um, I mean, it's it's not surprising to see Life Coach bring Druid because it is a deck that he's very familiar with. He plays ladder with it a lot, and Conquest format often will represent that. Um, Shaman, though, uh, we have seen some representation. I think more than Priest, if we want to give some credit to that. Yeah. It's, it's not popular, but it's more popular than Priest. But the few that we have seen have been exclusively mech. Um, have you seen any like non-mech shaman lists in the last few months? I've seen some uh, standard shaman coming back, um, and I think HPL League. Uh, we've seen some shaman action, and the shaman mm. was surprisingly good and uh, in grabbing some wins. But um, yeah, it's actually I think mech is running out of uh, out of popularity. A lot of player, players played it, and even Forsen, who was the the winner of the previous HTC tournament, he was running mech shaman and he won it. But I would say that Trump is bringing a, a standard, well, standard like a mid range shaman, um, mid range control shaman. Yeah, with uh, Neptulon okay. and Alakir, uh, Feral Spirit. Well, I'm pretty excited if that is going to be the case. But um, hey, man, I have my doubts. I don't know. I just haven't seen that deck in a while. So, yeah. Let's uh, right? in yeah, let's get the players to start. And we can uh, see what they're uh, what they're going to lead into here in a moment. It's so funny to play Shaman in this metagame because you can't really play Doomhammer. There is so much weapon removal, like yeah. Harrison Jones in every deck. Mm -hmm. Well, Life Coach is going to start with Warrior. Trump is going to start with Hunter. Um, 
Now, Life Coach has recently played a lot of Grim Patron Warrior from what I've seen. I think he was like the Control Warrior player. But uh, I think in recent times he has made uh, the same switch that most other Control Warrior players have played or have made. Just like we saw Show bring in the Patron. I think Trump is probably uh, bringing the Patron every time he plays Warrior in a tournament. Uh, it's kind of taken over, but it hasn't taken over by much. We still see a little bit of Control Warrior and sometimes it is successful as well. Yeah, it's still a good deck, and uh, today we've seen Control Warrior advance uh, to day two. Mm -hmm. But Green Patron for Life Coach is such a, a weird situation because he is called Rope Coach for a reason. He takes uh, ages to make his decisions. And in Green Patron, you, s you really have to make fast uh, math and fast calculation to the trigger to resolve everything. Yep. If Life Coach gets roped and misses uh, his full in attack, I think that everybody wants to see that. Uh, well... Not everybody. Okay. I think if you're on Life Coach's team, or if you're rooting for Life Coach, or uh, may maybe, you know, maybe you're maybe you're Life Coach's uh, wife. You know, you don't want to see him missing attacks. No, man. You want you want him hitting the attacks. You want him bringing home the the five k. Right. That's that's true. That's true. Um, even though I heard the rumors that he is a millionaire, but uh, he really respects the money, so he will respect anything he's getting uh, off mm -hmm. this tournament. We're sorry for missing the first few turns. Uh, again, there are some issues with spectator mode, and uh, rather than having you guys seeing all the bugs um, that come about from that, uh, we just have you guys look at our uh, amazing looking webcams. Yep. Okay. So what do we got here? This looks like a Grim Patient Warrior versus a mid-range Hunter. Yeah, that's certainly true. The web spinner is... Um saying that this is the mid-range. A Pilot of Shredder can be used in Face Hunter as well, but Web Spinner and Pilot of Shredder definitely suggests mid-range. And um, this is not a great hand for Trump. Like, he is missing turn three. Uh, playing a secret on two, not that great. We need to deal with the armor smith. Yeah. Well, the mid-range Hunter is basically, you want to try to push for some damage early on so that your late game can carry. And uh, the idea is... Oh my god! Gazrilla! I've seen Gazrilla a lot this week uh, with the... <laughs> the Brummel. <laughs> but uh, it's an interesting minion. Alright, well, uh, yeah, killing, uh, killing the Cruel Task not only makes it so Freeze has to hit on the Armorsmith, which is a slightly better target than the Cruel Task, but it also perhaps extends the weapon charges, which is uh, very nice. So it, it seems like the game is in equilibrium for now, but then Life Coach is missing draw. He will want to draw more cards. Something like a Battle Rage or Accolade of Pain would be amazing. Uh, he mm -hmm. does have his plays, though. He has the um, Death Spite. He has the Poison as well, even though no combo parts. We saw a very quick turn from Trump. Very obvious that the Shredder was a very good fit there. Um, it really only gets punished by a weapon. The issue is, well, there's the weapon. There's the weapon, but there will be a secret minion coming up. If it's a Doomsayer, oh, oh that's terrible. didn't work. Didn't it was work a very good all. minion back in the day. A one-two. Well, even though it's a terrible minion, it does allow Trump to clear the frothing, so it's not the worst thing ever. I mean, there there are worse minions. I think like Vitality Totem would have been worse. True. What about Lord Walker Cho? Um, as well. Executes? Yeah, you don't want to give them executes. Okay. It's a pretty bad RG for Trump, but could get worse. Yeah, as you Another mentioned. weapon, though. That, that sucks. Uh, is it good enough, though? Can you weapon and, like, juggler nothing? So the question will be, like, how do you win this game overall? Like, you do want to clear the frothing at this at this point. You might yeah. even go for the silence on the uh, armor smith. But uh, the silence is great versus Acolyte of Pain, so maybe you don't care about the armor that much at this point. Juggler into Death Spite. You have to keep in mind uh, the patron turn. The patron, but the, if the patron happens, you lose anyway. Mm, yeah, but it's unlikely that we're going to see it just a patron by itself on five. I mean, we talk about that as a possibility, but it, it's so rarely ever the ideal play. 
Like most of the time it's patron in a rage and then attack with death spite. And that's the, the ideal situation. You get four yeah. patrons really early. Yeah, none of that though. So um, I think I like just the other armorsmith and the frothing. Yeah, I they, like it as well. Well, hmm. Attack into uh, Juggler. You can spend the weapon here. It's not like the weapon is needed because you don't have anything to follow up. And uh, you, you're going to get uh, frothing value anyway. I think the main issue is that if you do that, if you do the attack, it makes it so um, your opponent can just kill your frothing with a weapon hit, which is a bit disappointing. But what else can you do? Yeah, there's not much. Uh, at this point, you don't have any card draw. You have two cards that are not that good, and you know you're fo uh, you're following up with Torisan. So holding cards at this point doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. So you have to be aggressive. Well, I don't know what to call this. It's not exactly aggressive. Proactive, maybe? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's something. Like you play your cards. It's not it's not passive, but it's not really aggressive. Yeah. Oh man, it seems like a T-Rex battle. Like both players, they just uh, try to do something, but they really don't have the means. Mm -hmm. But those armor smiths are doing some work. They are buying a lot of time for life coach, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's a combo deck. Time does usually give you the win. Right now, uh, life coach just needs a lot more than what he has. Slum is card draw, but oh man, it feels so bad. Like you play Torisan into that weapon and uh, and Mad Scientist. That's okay though. If you don't activate the trap, like right now, I feel the problem is um, you're denied board because of the traps, because it would buff the weapon, and that's the second weapon too. So I think Tharson is is a fine play here. Might be the only play. Like, you don't want to slam and not draw. You want to slam something and draw a card. No, you can slam your uh, armor smith if you really want. If you slam your acolyte, what happens? You draw a card, you might get... Um... Like, he, he really needs a battle rage. He needs to start drawing those cards. Mm -hmm. If you slam and get a battle rage, I think that's fine. Drawing two cards. Filtering your deck a bit. I think the longer this this rope burns, the more likely we're seeing Emperor. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there we go. I don't know if I like the attack, though. I think playing the Emperor requires the weapon hit, so you can actually destroy the weapon that way. I agree. Um, and maybe if there is a uh, freezing, you might actually replay Acolyte there. But I, I think your play was the best, not attacking at all. But then if the weapon attacks, he's going to, to deal 5 points of damage. So Trample dropped to 19. <laughs> no man, Gus Rilla. Actually with... There is a slam, so the slam will be amazing for Execute. Slam Execute, yep. Yeah. And, and the battle is the battle! Wow, it would have been it! It would have been exactly what you were mentioning. If you if you slam and Trump battle rage, it's great. But he would have. And then and he Trump, would have... Trump is explosive, that's pretty interesting. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, no, I actually didn't. So he might be playing the version I was talking about the first match. Double freezing, one explosive. Mm -hmm. By the way, there is a very interesting build of Hunter uh, flying around with misdirection, like a trap hunter. I don't think it's that competitive yet, but on ladder is actually very... Well, misdirect is one of those cards that will just never be that good. Because if it is that good, people expect it, and if people expect it, it sucks. Yeah, but even if you expect it, if you have this big frothing on board, and that's the only minion you have, mm -hmm. it still works. Yeah, but what if you do like a combo and you attack first an armor smith that goes into a grim patron and suddenly you have twice as many patrons? If you, yeah, if you have that combo, then for sure. That's why the, I think the deck is running more secrets, not only Mizrak. Okay. Uh, here for Trump, yeah. I, you just. I think that's an Iron Beak Owl target. You basically yeah. Iron Beak, Hamaster, Hero Power. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, I mean, your trap is explosive. If you can deny the explosive from going off, that's good. You can maybe one-shot the Armorsmith. Also good. I don't see much of a downside here, actually. 
The only downside is that you spend your owl, so you will not be able to silence the acolyte if there is a top deck, but at this point it, you should not care about it that much. It's a bigger board, so <laughs> there is the acolyte top deck. Okay. Oh man, that battle rage. It looks really bad for Trump. Life Coach has a lot of health. He will be able to draw a lot of cards. He still has all the combos mostly. Yeah, Trump just sees it. This is over. Like he just Actually, did not have enough fuel. And we have we have some ruling for the admins. The the reason Trump conceded there was um, apparently because he chose the wrong hunter out of his several hunter options. Um, I I don't think it really matters too much because it's the first opening game. But, um, I mean, these are the rules, so we have to stick with them. Uh, if the players play the decks that they did not submit uh, before the tournament, uh, I think they are uh, dropping that game. Uh, so it, it seemed like uh, things are not going too well for Trump there anyway, but uh, that has to be the ruling that is made. So yeah, we uh, have some... Trump drops the game there, and we will probably see something slightly different from the Hunter deck that we'll have to try to win in the next match. Yeah, and um, I just wanted to mention that we have really clear uh, rulings that were sent to players, so players are aware of what's happening. And uh, for Trump, it was unfortunate that he's losing the game, but on the other hand, I think that the game was lost anyway, even though he, he chose the, the wrong deck and he went that Hunter into, into Green Patron. That Patron had it in the bag. Like, yeah. Trump had no cards and no board almost after that turn. Yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting now that I think about it. It's... It's all right. Like, now Life Coach doesn't even know what to expect from... From the Hunter. Hunter deck. Yeah. Do, it's like, do you think Trump got an advantage? Because he has a different deck? Yeah, but he lost anyway, so losing is not really an advantage. But uh, it's all right. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Life Coach doesn't, doesn't mind too much. Honest mistakes happen. Okay, so. And here we go. Um, Flame Tongue is actually not that common in the uh, Mech Shaman, is it? Um, no, it's not that common. I don't remember the latest lists, but um, I mean, I, I would like, I would love to see Trump playing the mid-range Shaman, but this is this is as you expected the, the Mech one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we saw a Mulligan away a uh, Flame Tongue totem. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, but this does seem like it's the Mech Shaman. Um, do you think there's any reason to like slow play a Mech Shaman? Like to kind of make it a mechy control y type of Shaman? Are you, you mean with the build or with the place? With the build. With the build? No, I don't think so. At this, at this point, I think it's just a really honest deck. You, you, draw, you, you play what you draw into and you try to deal as much damage as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, against against a druid, like Mech Mage was really good versus druid. Uh, Mech Shaman should be good enough. Uh, we haven't seen a Wagro from from Life Coach, or, or have we? Uh, no, I don't think so. Raph. No, there was a Raph, I believe. Only yeah, he he coined into a four mana play, so yeah, that would mean there's no Wagro. All right, well, this is. Uh... This is the Mech Shaman, boys. You uh, play stuff, you hit face, and you hope for the best. And right now, things aren't going too badly. Get six <laughs> damage in. Yeah, why not? It's, it's a good opening, but he doesn't really have a great turn five. Uh, the only on Ayatron for now. Uh, for Life Coach, though, he doesn't have a great hand as well. Uh, he, he missed the wide growth, uh, not really any evades. A lot of swipes, so he will be maybe able to contain the board. But other than that, do you yeah. go for the yellow trade? And he goes for the swipe, which seems a bit unusual. No respect for the wow for the wizardic. He's just letting the damage happen, I guess. Um, now the fell reaver seems really strong, but I'd argue that it's stronger to earthshock that thing and play the annoyatron. <laughs> oh yeah, Earth earthshock is just crazy. By the way, Crip, I'm asking everybody this, but do you know what's the difference between the golden um, Zapomatic and the non-golden one? Um, I think the golden one has like laser beams that are like glowing green around it. 
Uh, close. The difference is the laser beams, but the difference is the color. Um, the normal one is a Jedi, so it has green lightsabers, and the oh, it's red, right? It's red. It's a Sith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. I don't even know if I've ever played a golden one, but I remember just looking at some of the golden cards when I get them. The Sith. Oh man. Yeah. Dark side. Dark side stronger, guys. Now you know. Blizzard confirmed. And now um, we will have second swipe, I believe. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, okay. Where's the taunt? Um, this works fine. It it stops. Oh my god. Uh, I just wanted to say that he did that play because he's seen one airship already, so he wasn't taking into account the second one. But I think this is an earth shock play. Yeah, it is. Six points of damage. Seven actually. Seven points of damage. Oh no, he doesn't think so. Okay. Well, he gives up seven points of damage. Uh, I think this actually works out better because Big Game Hunter would have slammed down on that. Uh, uh, what is it called? Fell Reaver, pretty hard. That would have been very unfortunate for Trump. The idea with this Shaman deck is once you lose the board, you're dead. No time like That's you true. need, you need like your opponent to be within that range where you can top deck, crackle, and win. I would say and that it, was a Trump play because it brought him more value overall than just mm -hmm. Nerf Shock. All right. Um, well, he can deal with Sylvanas with Earthshock attack and then Fire Elemental on it again. Um, and if he made the play last turn, it seems this play is kind of in line with that. Uh, he won't. He doesn't need to attack into Sylvanas because like, Earthshock is too damage. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I missed the spell damage totem. You're right. But still, it's pretty good. Um, how does Druid come back from this? Like Sylvanas was one of one of the best options to to come back from a difficult spot. I think you just don't like. Yeah. Okay, no, you Azure Drake and then top deck and innervate. Azure Drake, top deck, innervate, and then swipe? Fire Elemental. Then you're technically not dead to the board, but at this moment he doesn't have anything. He doesn't yeah. even have Azure Drake. So. Yeah, I think there's zero options for him to stay alive. Like, even, even the Force of Nature is not enough. Yeah, he can't kill... Is there something we don't see? Because he hasn't conceded yet. He's thinking. No, he's just uh, trying to look at the options. If there's any combination of, like, Savage or Swipe that he can use, but... Okay. Uh, well, okay. that does not win the game. Even though no. Dr. Boom seems good on turn 7. That was not this the best Dr. Boom I've seen. This is what I would refer to uh, as the bamboozle play. It's What's the it's the take take a second or play really really quickly, and uh, obviously you're still losing the game, but you just hope that your opponent misses lethal. Don't you think it was kind of like uh, he was trying to intimidate Trump into conceding? It's like, hey, Doctor Boomer Seven, yo, concede, please. <laughs> no, no, but uh, again, like. Technically, that's the best play, if you really think about it. <laughs> okay, explain. Like, okay, so if you concede, you lose. But if you make the best play, considering your opponent might miss lethal, and he does miss lethal, then you might win the game later on. Okay, so if there is a possibility of Trump missing lethal with double fire mental into 10 life... Yeah. It's possible. He, he could misclick. It's like you put three targets on board, and then when you try to click on the hero... You exactly. Have... Okay, exactly. that makes sense. Right? So that there's some chance. Level. There's some chance. Well, uh, Trump evens the series with the Shaman. So uh, the Shaman performing pretty well here. Um, he was up against the Druid, which is another deck that you thought was maybe a bit adventurous. It doesn't seem too adventurous. Like, if we had a fourth deck, I think Druid might be that fourth class. But it is three deck conquest, so uh, it is maybe a little bit out of the norm in this case. Life coach just loves the druid. He plays almost yeah. almost every tournament. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're getting into our next game here in a moment. Um, it is going to be queued up as Hunter on Trump's side, the correct Hunter this time. I actually wonder uh, what type of Hunter deck he actually uh, enlisted in the tournament against Life Coach's Druid. Now. From my understanding, Druid is bad against every version of Hunter. Isn't that the case? Uh, there is only the case of Face Hunter versus Taunt Druid. 
it's uh, it favors the druid, but uh, but we know it's is... not taunt druid. Yeah. yeah, we know it's normal version. It might be even uh, kind of like rampish. Uh, Life coach just loves nourish cards like that, uh, going mm -hmm. really greedy with his cards. So I think Tramble will be really favored, especially looking at this hand right now. Um, I don't know if the viewers can see it at the moment, nope. but no hand, nothing to see. It, we, we're, not, we're not seeing anything. We just know it's Hunter versus Druid. Yep, Hunter versus Druid. Um, yep. Well, I have I have like no experience playing Hunter, but I can very easily imagine how games turn out because the Hunter Hunter's goal is fairly one dimensional. Yeah, it's um with the with this kind of Druid that it, that is we can see mid range at the moment uh, with High Main and. Pilot Shredder, you basically want to deal some damage early, and then you take over the board with the big creatures, with value creatures. And uh, mm -hmm. no surprise that Trump is actually playing this version. Pilot Shredder, High Man has a lot of value, and Life Coach is actually getting a very impressive hand. Yeah, yeah, he's pointing out the wild growth. He'll be on three mana next turn, which will allow him to innervate out a five drop, which he has two of, so he absolutely will do that. Trump also has a good hand. He has the a pretty good two, a really good three, and I think it's actually the best four in the deck. Um, and then the high main uh, eventually. So he just has to fill up his fifth turn with draws while he plays these out. Yeah, this is an amazing hand for Trump, but um, a 4 6 might be troublesome. <laughs> oh man, it's just like if you attack, you play into swipe so badly. Yeah, but if you don't. You, you have to take the risk, I believe. Uh, yeah, I, no, I, it, it's fine. You don't have to attack actually, because next turn you're playing the Piloted Shredder, and that's going to be against the four health um, Druid of the Claw, and the Druid of the Claw is probably not going to attack into the Creeper. Well, the the thing is like, if you don't attack, oh, okay, because like if you don't attack, he can uh, he will not swipe. And if you attack, he swipes. You you have a Piloted Shredder. Well, if if he has swipe, he's going to attack your Creeper, so you basically yep. gain four life. That's true, that's true. So I so think Trump made the, the correct play there. I agree. Okay. Piloted Shredders. Alright, well it looks like this game will be left up to Piloted Shredder RNG. Piloted Shredder from Trump, I don't think there's any other play. Uh, in the meantime, he drew a very nice turn 5, he has the option to quick shot and play either Kill Command or uh, the second Animal Companion. I think Life Coach's hand is not that good, actually. Like, he got this Force of Nature, he has a Wrath, so he will be able to draw something. But Harrison Jones is useless for now. There is no weapon, he will not be able to draw cards with it. He might actually even play it this turn, because getting a 5-4 on the board it will be amazing. No, I don't think so. I think playing a card behind Taunt is a better decision. I think it's better to Wrath the 4-3 and to just YOLO the BGH down. Okay, that has to die. How do you kill it though? If you attack with the bear, then um, bear will die to Contemporary. <clears throat> yeah. Tempo BGH. No, I think the Shredder has to go. Would you, like overall, would you play BGH those turns versus Hunter or would you keep it? Because at this point... I'd play it. You'd play it, okay. Play for sure, but I'd see what this comes first. I mean, if this is Doomsayer, I'm not playing anything. All right, so a tempo BGH, and then uh... oh, double face. Um, is this a disaster? This might be a disaster. Might be a disaster for for life coach. If you play, what do you? How do you play this out? So you have the quick shot. You have the kill commands. Basically, you can play both. Yeah, it looks. Uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, he can kill command the the bear first. Or do no, you... you don't kill command. You would quick shot. I think kill command is more valuable, isn't it? Uh, unless you want to play two of them. Like because you can clear this board, possibly. Um... Okay. Well, no. If if you do want to play kill command, actually no. I think you quick shot or kill command the shredder. You quick shot the shredder and kill. Yeah, and then three one into the into the bear, and then one one into the BGH. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's that it. was the play. Yeah, Trump made it. We all saw it about the same time. Pretty good. And this uh, hopefully is like Huffer or Misha. Yep, it's Misha. And this is uh, weak to swipe, but uh, Life Coach only has three cards in hand. He has the combo. Mm -hmm. But he can't play anything, really. 
Oh man, yeah, he has to. Is... So shapeshift seems like an obvious play. Like you attack into the four four, you take some damage. Is it obvious? Well, this is the like easiest play, but then like uh, the other option will be just uh, because he can't really play Harrison into this. If he plays Harrison, he loses to Misha, so there's no point. And uh, so Force of Nature is the only other play he can do here. And with Force of Nature, he can clear. He can't. Well, he can clear the board, but then he's losing everything as well, unless he just puts free damage on a uh, on Trump. So I think like this is actually the shapeshift. You attack into yeah. for shapeshift and you pass. I think the Harrison isn't really that bad though. Like if you play Harrison, um, like Trump might. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so he goes for the for the damage. Yeah, if you play Harrison, Trump might uh, just trade for you. Is the thing. I wonder if Lifecoach is thinking at any point about um, the Freezing Trap, because Freezing Trap is one of the cards that makes this matchup so bad for Druid. Now high main on empty board. This sucks for Life Coach. There's that swipe! <laughs> yeah, one turn too late. Yeah, one turn too late. Alright, well, if Life Coach gets that second Force of Nature, uh, he's almost definitely gonna win this game. Um, well, at this point, I think it's actually a, an amazing... Oh, no, the, the Houndmaster, right? Master Kill Command, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Never mind. That's not really enough. You should not be worried about BGH as well, because you've just seen one. Uh, you might be worried about a great silence target, but do you really care about that? Um, well, how do you win this game if you're Life Coach? I think you have to draw... Um, you have to draw... No, you can't draw Keeper anymore. Oh, wow. That's actually a, a really smart play by Trump. Because here, if he taunts ahead of time, it can get silenced, right? Yeah. But if he taunts into the combo, the combo is delayed one turn. And that one turn is what Trump needs to seal the game. That's true. And he sees the spot because there's only eight mana for Life Coach. So that was really good. Oh, wow, Life Coach oh, gets man. the combo. And I, I believe it's that exact play that is going to stop him from being able to win. Can Trump get greedy and play a high main? But still, he is at 17, so this this combo with Innervate will be 15 points of damage. So Life Coach is still short. Yeah, he Best is. Trump doesn't clear, plays the high main, goes for face, and opens himself up. Well, you, you definitely don't do that. Trump knows. Yeah. To do Trump's, it. Trump's played this game before, Ninch. He's, he's done this. He's, he played Hearthstone, okay. <laughs> it looks like he's uh, thinking of trading and then hound mastering, though. Yeah, that's pretty okay. good. Playing ground combo, like he knows that nothing kills him. Um, well, I think Life Coach here... Can he do the combo and then swipe the turn after? He's got uh, 6 plus 6 plus 3. Yes, so I think Life Coach's play is to combo face and swipe the turn after and hope you don't die. How much damage is there for, uh, for Trump? There's 10, 15, so... This is actually 17 points of damage, so Life Coach is not dead. If he combos and then swipes, that, that will be it. Unless Trump top decks one point of damage. Crip, this is crazy. Life Coach can still what? win this game. Can he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because with, with the uh, Houndmaster, it's one short. I thought it was without the Houndmaster, it was one short. No, I miscalculated. Yeah, he's with Houndmaster, he's still one short. Hound Master yeah. Hero Power, and then he needs to top like one point of damage somehow, unless Life Coach doesn't YOLO. If Life Coach trades, he loses the game, and he knows that. There is yeah. only one chance. I think you yeah. either, even innervate the Hero Power here. Yep. It's the only way you're getting that thing through. So why not? Okay, he didn't miss the attack. I was a bit worried there. Trump <laughs> needs two damage here. Is it one? Oh, two now it's two because he interviewed. Oh, oh yeah. no, it's not enough. It's not enough because it's only plus two. Oh yeah. my god, this is so crazy. I don't think there's anything Trump can do. His best play is to just taunt two different targets and go for it. Yeah, like he prays there is no keeper and no swipe. This is the power of the druid. But Trump played it extremely well. 
Yeah, both players played it extremely well, in fact. Pretty impressive. And Life Coach knows at this point that he is in a good spot. Sigh of relief. Trump is like, please don't kill me. Please don't have... Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Trump is really struggling with Hunter. Um, I have to be honest, it seems like this deck is exactly the same as the other one that was apparently a mistake. It's probably like one card off or something, but it yeah. really didn't matter as it really seemed like he was going to lose that first game as well. So uh, Hunter not really working out for Trump. Trump is uh, with one point on the board while Life Coach is on, uh, on the double point. Life Coach is on match point, in fact. And um, yeah, man. It seems uh, surprising to me that Hunter can't pick up a win, but it is up against Warlock. Most Hunter versions do well against most Warlock uh, versions, and then it's probably going to be Warlock versus Warlock. So I think Trump's, Trump's still in this. It's usually what we see where uh, one player seems to have the better matchups, but he is uh, down one game compared to his opponent. Yeah, Trump is still in. Like He can still win the, with the match. I wonder which Warlock is Life Coach playing, though. Uh, I would put him mostly as a handlock player, and mm -hmm. he played a lot of handlock. I haven't seen him playing Malagos that much, but I haven't been following his stream lately. I think he's actually won a few tournaments off on the back of Zulok, though, so I, I wouldn't count him 100% locked on handlock. Uh, we will see uh, Hunter versus Warlock uh, when we get into the game here in a moment, uh, with Life Coach almost certainly playing uh, handlock himself. Um, this. This matchup usually goes the Hunter's way, but it's no longer really that favored as it once was. It's a, a bit awkward because if there are like not many, there are not many Siphon Souls, and if Hunter is able to uh, put some damage in, but not enough for the Molten Giants, and then follow up with those big creatures like High Mains. And uh, I think this version, we've seen one quick shot at least, but now with double kill command, maybe double quick shot, there is much more reach for uh, for the Hunter players. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So for life coach here, uh, just uh, playing the ancient watcher to be able to silence the next turn, or maybe tone it up, makes sense. Uh, unless he wants to. Is there any point in? Tappy tappy. All right. Ooh, ooh hellfire! Hello. Oh man, it's gonna be like the worst <laughs> hellmaster ever if he goes for it. Yeah. It does not. Pretty tough. Um. But he knows that, right? Like he he knows that Hellfire is a threat. Uh, a lot of people yeah. are playing double Hellfire. They're trying to get the the Fraudal minions right there. I like Shadow Flame much more as a card, but I can understand why double Hellfire is more successful. I, I'm I'm the same. Like I'm a fan of Sh Shadow Flame, but then with Shadow Flame you need the setup, so people go for the early damage. Mm -hmm. It's harder to get a good Shadow Flame early. Uh, uh, is this the turn where you just Houndmaster? I think so. You might, it's a 4-3 and you have a Hellmaster on 5 with the boar. Yeah. But do you attack? It will be 5 mana, you can attack for... Can you set up lethal somehow? If you if you play the Hellmaster this turn, there will be 6 points of damage. 7, 9... For now, Trump is still in a good shape. Um, leaving Life Coach in 4 means that he will not be able to play a Molten Giant and Taunt it up. Play a Mountain Giant and Taunt it up? How about that? Mountain I can't Taunt it up, but... Yeah, he, next turn. he might Ancient Watcher and Taunt it up. Not that exciting, but still something. You think it's that scary? So there's 5 damage incoming. Um, so 9 more. Uh, 2 from Hero Power, which is 7. No, seven's not possible from what I from what I understand. The I think the most you can do on three mana is what? Uh kill command probably maybe. No, there's no beast though. So quick shots Quick shot abusive surgeon or something. Yeah. But the problem is for life coach that even though like every damage is a liability at this point, he doesn't have a heal. So even yeah. if he goes into a big molten turn next turn. He will be still in the range of the hero power and maybe a quick shot. Mm -hmm. Or kill command hero power. Well, I mean, he he only has one premium taunt activator. Like, if he does do the Ancient Watcher play and Trump gets him to 12, he still can't really play much. He still won't be able to, like, Molten and Taunt on the same turn. That's true. With Animal Companion, 
I think Animal Companion is still the play. Yeah, looks good to me. Animal Companion, Hero Power, you want to abuse that. Um, even though having a 3-3 free, free boar is cute, <laughs> that's a lot of value, so maybe Trump is going for it. Like, looking at it, this is how, how much stats? 7-6 stats for 5 mana. Alright, Trump pushes the damage, Life Coach is on 6 life. Uh, life Coach will basically dump his Molten Giant combos, but he will absolutely just need to win or top deck a heal next turn. And I don't think that's very possible. Well, he's not dead yet, so as you said, he has one more turn and probably double heal bot in the deck. Can he maybe be close? He can't tap for it. He can't, no, he can't. Unless, like, well, next turn he might be actually tapping. Like, this turn he can't tap, uh, but next turn, if he is 7, he can tap and hope for a heal bot if he doesn't draw it. I think if you're Trump, you actually just quick shot him to one life so he can't tap, though. Isn't that the better play? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably go for it. Because it's not like he can gain life any other way. Okay, so double Molten, taunt it up with maybe Defender Vargas to save mana, and... Do you even silence the... Can you set up Lethal next turn? If you silence the, the pig at this point? Or you can silence next turn, you basically need a, a small taunt giver. That's not lethal. Yeah. How much damage life coach, life coach has? This is 18 plus 8. That's a lot. That's 20, 20, 8, 28. He actually has lethal if nothing dies here. Wow. So but you, you would kill that Argus. Yeah, well, Argus is, in, is in, in, in reach. Wait, but even if you kill Argus, you're still dead. There's Defender of Argus coming from the... From hand. So oh, that's will, true. That will be. Oh no, much? Misha boys. <laughs> oh man. There is one silence. So a life coach. I think he still has a chance. If he top decks the heal bot, he will. He will be even able to tap. Okay. Well, Trump removes nine damage off the board. So it's nineteen. Uh, counting the freezing trap. Twenty-one. Not there yet. No. Oh man, actually I think that might be it. Because uh, Life Coach needed a heal, or lethal. Well, he might get a heal from the Mortal Coil, but how can you set up a Mortal Coil here? Like, how can you set up a Mortal Coil and play the heal bot when you draw it? I think you have to tap at this moment. Uh, tap into heal bot, Lothab. Yeah. No, Lothab doesn't do anything. You have to tap into a heal bot. Because Trump didn't quick shot. Um, but he will not be able to hero power. No, wait. Tap into Lothab, yeah. He's dead to quick shot. You're right. Hmm. No, if you tap Lothab, he's dead to hero power. Isn't he? He's yeah. Two life that's, that's true. That's true. Life tap yeah. is taking two points of life. I don't think you can mortal coil into anything. So, yeah. I think you just... You either play as if the hunter has nothing which is a play. Like, Life Coach might, like, just not tap. Which yeah, is a certain right. loss, but... What can you do? Yeah, we can see that, but like, Life Coach doesn't know about it. Yeah, it's still a fair play from his side. Alright, so... Quick shot and hero power, and Trump takes game number two, and we have a tie! Yeah, Trump picks up a win with a Hunter, finally. Um, score on the Hunter deck ended up being, like, one win, one loss for this one, and zero wins, one loss for the other one. But they, they seem like the same hunter deck, so I don't know. Whatever. Explosive chop, maybe? Have we seen explosive chop? From yeah, it was, it was probably some um, some trap uh, tech that was maybe a little bit different. But Cheap in any case, we, top. Yeah, we are on match point for both players. Both players have warlock remaining. Um, we saw handlock from life coach already. What is the best case for Trump here? What version of warlock tends to beat handlock the most? Uh, Maligos versus Handlock. Maligos lock uh, is heavy favored because mm -hmm. uh, you basically go to late game both both of you and um, Mali like original Maligos lock was running double BGH and you win with uh, Maligos combo because both players they, they go down and then because you had enough time to, to accumulate all the combo parts. Yeah, I see. You just burst them down. 
uh, obviously it's not like a 100% win. Uh, still, it's really important to be in the mid game to have BGH for the giant. Twilight tricks are important. The minion trading in the middle. But then the longer the game goes, if Handlock is not able to take it early, uh, Malagos will be able to take it uh, with the burst. Do you think there's much chance of Trump playing a Malagos Warlock though? I think there there is definitely a chance. Like this deck was played in Dreamhack, and uh, Trump has seen that it's a good deck. Basically, if you expect your opponent to bring Headlock, you you will mm -hmm. bring uh, Malagos. I feel like Trump is one of those players that just, you know, he brings a fairly wide variety of decks, but all the decks that he brings, he's played a lot of. And he played a lot of Headlock. Yeah, and I don't know if he's played much of uh, Dragonlock or Malagos Lock, however you want to call it. Both names are, I guess. Yeah, so I, th I think that's something to consider. I think. I think most likely we'll see the uh, the zoo or the control warlock deck. Uh, we will get into the game in a second. Again, we're, we're sorting out some issues with spectator mode. Uh, it is kind of an ongoing thing. We apologize that you guys have to miss the uh, the mulligan stage and sometimes the first few turns of the match. But um, well, you're not missing anything because there's literally nothing to coherently see on the board. So we're doing our best. Hope you guys are enjoying the tournament so far. Uh, it is shaping up to be quite a good one. And uh, if you guys do enjoy it, make sure you guys check out uh, tomorrow's stream, which uh, it's going to be from eight players down to one. Today we're going to see each player play once, and we're going to get our uh, our 16 players down to eight by the end of the day. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, those players with always their life, life on the line. You lose, you're out. And um, that's the HTC Recharge Tournament. You have to win if you want to be there. Last time it was Forsen, never lost, and uh, he won the, the whole tournament, so we'll see if he keeps his style or if he fails miserably. Well, here we go, the uh, Imp Gang boss into the Twilight Drake from Trump. Uh, basically, Life Coach knows exactly what he's playing against. I don't think there are any other Warlock decks that play uh, this set of two cards. Yeah, not not really. Like this is definitely a, a huge sign. Like, hey, I'm playing Molygus deck, and a pretty good opening for both players. Twilight Tricks are super important in this matchup, and uh, as as we discussed, Trump has a huge edge, and uh, he got double. Like, look at this hand grip. This is yep. a dream. Double BGH. He get he gets the Twilight Tricks. You will be able to contain his board, and then every giant just sniped. Yeah, it seems here like the abuse of Twilight Drake is a better play, but the uh, Blackwing Corruptor is using the last Twilight Drake as the hold option. And if uh, if he plays the Twilight Drake, he may not have another dragon to play the Blackwing Corruptor uh, again for, uh, for any future turns. So this is kind of the idea here, uh, where it may not seem like the best play for the turn. It's pretty good. It's good enough, I think and it lets you have uh, more options for the next few turns. I agree, that's pretty smart. And I'm trying to figure out like how Life Coach can actually uh, win this match. Here he obviously has a, has a good trade with the 4-6 into the 5-4. Um, Hellfire, not really the play. Belcher, I guess you would just play Belcher in this turn. You, you trade 4-6 into the 5-4, then you play Belcher and pass. It's, it's pretty strong, contest the board. You still have the 4-1 uh, to deal with stuff. Interesting for Trump that his hand is mostly really good cards versus handlock, but not the cards that Malagos wants. Like, you don't have any combo pieces, you only have that so far, mm -hmm. but you want to get that Torison at some point. And maybe Malagos. More dragons. All right. Well, um, Life Coach goes with a Belcher. Um, I'd be surprised if he doesn't kill off the 5-4. Uh, or even the 4-3 is a pretty good target. What do you think is the reasoning behind going face? Is this just the best play and I'm, I'm like not good at this deck? No, I've... Uh, okay, so basically I would definitely kill the 5-4, but life coach, what Life Coach might be thinking is that this matchup is so bad that he wants to be aggressive. He also has uh, Ragnaros in his hand, and so he knows that there will be no um, threat of Molten Giants, so maybe he has to mm -hmm. bait out Trump into a good Hellfire for him. For him. Okay, Trump goes with the uh, build your own board play. Uh, he had the option to clear by soul firing the one two taunt and abusive sergeanting the remaining Drake, but you don't. Yeah, want that doesn't. That seems a little wasteful. 
With double BGH, Trump is super happy. Like, look mm -hmm. at his face. This is the happy face of Trump. It looks like the regular face of Trump. I guess Trump's always happy. I'm sure he's bursting in, in, with happiness inside. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like that kind of guy. Happiness and excitement. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, life coach. Picks up a silence there. That seems uh, quite relevant here uh, on that 4 8 Drake. He is actually able to clear with uh, the silence on a Hellfire, but because he spent two mana tapping for that silence, it's. Uh, well, not as not as good, let's say. He might be forced to Hellfire, like, if you silence this turn... Uh... You can Shadow Flame and clear the board still, uh, with attacking... It goes in Hellfire, though. What about Watcher... Sun Fury? Why do you think he's choosing to save the Shadow Flame? I think he just wants to push for more damage again? It is consistent okay. with the other plays. So basically, you get a more or less same effect with Hellfire here, and the Shadow Flame you save for the bigger creatures. So like okay. if you get Molten Giant or... Also, you don't... You, he's playing really aggressive. Uh, he got Trump to, well, 13 at this point. Mm -hmm. He knows that time is a liability. The more time he gives Trump, the, the worse for him. Right. Um, well, Life Coach on 7 mana still doesn't have too much. He picks up a Mountain Giant. The Mountain Giant is pretty decent. He's able to tap Mountain Giant and give it Taunt, which might seem like a good play, but it really is not. Um, but I think Life Coach also knows this matchup pretty well. I think he knows the risk involved in actually playing an 8 health minion as your only turn, as, your, as the only thing you play for one turn, and how risky that really is against the stack. By the way, this, this Malaga's deck is so explosive that if uh, Life Coach taps, or if he doesn't play a Taunt, then Trump has possible lethal with Azur Drake, and uh, Abuse the Surgeon double Soulfire if the Soulfire doesn't discard the Soulfire. Yes, doesn't he have Lethal anyway? Um, Soulfire, Soulfire... Oh no, he's one off. But he can play the other Azure Drake. No, yeah, he has Lethal why... right now. Yeah, he has Lethal with... Uh, but Life Coach can't, cannot um, turn up. So basically... Oh yeah, and Lothab also seals the Soulfires for the moment. Mm -hmm. For the moment. Alright. Okay. So uh, I think this might be a good moment to... Emperor? You want to heal, I think. If you if you Emperor... Okay, so there's five damage incoming. You'll drop down to eight. Is there anything that can kill you? There is a Ragnaros. But uh, yeah, he's going to kill the five. The five, five. Mm -hmm. I like this play. Again, like Emperor Tharson's critical to this deck. It's critical to a lot of uh, the cards that are currently in Trump's hand. Um, it's a good turn where it's not very costly to play it, so overall, uh, it seems very strong to me. Defender pickup is pretty good for the Shadow Flame. He will be able to clear Emperor. Do you think that's absolutely necessary here? Uh, if you don't clear the Emperor, Emperor is going to attack, so you might actually taunt up. If you play Mountain Giant and Sun Fury, uh, then you have a lot of taunts. But you, want to, you, you might want to get rid of the Azure Drake because of the spell damage. What if you silence it and then Argus up to try to push for a lethal with Ragnaros on the following turn? So you silence the Ancient Watcher, you Argus, both of them, you deal five points of damage. Yeah, that might be the best play for, for Life Coach because after seeing Torison against this deck, you might be thinking, hey, I'm at 17. I'm already in lethal range. He basically ki kills me next turn with Maligus Dark Bomb so far. Okay, only goes with these uh, Shadow Flame play. Just Works out for now. Oh wow! So with Azurjay, how much damage is this? This is four. This is um, fourteen. If you don't discard, it's nine. Nine guaranteed and potentially fourteen. Yeah. You can also just double Mortal Coil at two three. Yeah. Would you coil? Would you double coil here? It doesn't matter that much, I think. Yeah, it really doesn't. Okay, so now back to life coach. At this moment, life coach at least knows that he's not dead to Malagos. Um, he might assume that hey, there is there is no Malagos or there is not enough spells to kill me with Malagos, but uh, he needs to deal with the board. A four four and three three. Mm -hmm. So 
It seems like a decent opportunity for Ragnaros, and he hasn't really had a great one yet. So with Ragnaros, you just attack it, the free free you, you coil, and then you Ragnaros. Well, you, yeah. you look first, like coil you draw. first. Yeah, maybe you get a maybe maybe get a better option. I don't know what that would be, but we Ragnaros. can check. Ragnaros might be risky. Like if you if you miss with Ragnaros, uh, you're at thirteen after the attack, and then thirteen will be. Yeah, basically like dark bomb, double so far, double dark bomb so far, stuff like that. All right, he goes for the Ragnaros play. Okay, he got a dark bomb of his own. And face. Well, Trump does not have guaranteed lethal. Well, that's um, yeah. He has a chance. I think he he can tap first, and then he can go for it. That's uh, how many cards does he have? Well, he'll have to play. He should play the dark bomb first. Right now, he has nine. So if he taps to ten, uses dark bomb, goes to nine, uses soul fire, goes to eight. It would be a one in eight chance of discarding. All right, he goes for it. Soul fire magic. Are we going to see it? Oh man, yep. he didn't discard it. So on the back of double so far, Trump is actually taking a series versus life coach. That's impressive. It is. It is. Uh, coming back from behind, he was uh, down one game at two different spots, um, evened it up, and ended up taking it right at the end. That's so a Trump, Trump. Trump moves on. Yeah. That's that's our HTC player win. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah, I think that's actually true. This is the first HTC uh, player win, and that's 100% of TSM participants actually advancing. And we obviously yep. have a TSM player uh, that is going to make the finals. Yep, yep. It's basically locked in. It's guaranteed. Yeah. Okay, it's not guaranteed, but it's, it's totally going to happen. Don't leave me, Crip. Don't get sapped. <laughs> Stay here. It's your channel, man. All right, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, up next, we will continue the games. We have I believe, three more matchups for you guys to see. Um, we can see that Trump uh, has locked in as Bunny Muffin's opponent in the opening match tomorrow. And we will continue to fill up that eight player bracket that you see there. Uh, the next match will be Dog versus Purple Drank. And the winner of that match will be pinned up against Asahida in our likely second game tomorrow again guys hope you guys are having fun uh just uh before we uh, go to a break get uh dog and purple drank some time to set up for their match against each other uh want to let you guys know that htc is uh doing some good stuff for the Hearthstone community um htc recharged is the second of uh the htc tournaments so they are putting these on they are becoming a regular thing they're becoming a pretty awesome thing and they're also given back to you guys. Um, if you guys do want to check out some of the HTC products, some of the HTC phones, you guys can get a $50 discount right now with a promo code, and you guys can check that out in the description below. So make sure to check that out, because why not? I mean, it's a break. What are you going to watch? Free stuff. Go check I mean, it out. it's not entirely free, but it's, you know. It's, it's closer to free. I think you're getting a free case. I'm not sure, but uh, mm. a free case is always good, because it's free. Why not? All right, guys. We'll be back shortly. Keep tuned.